Hi, I'm Ryan Szymanski, curator for Battleship New Jersey Museum and Memorial. And today we're going to be doing some shipboard archaeology. This is another video in our series on uh, museum thoughts, theories, practices. Specifically today, we're talking about the 20 millimeter mounting points on Battleship New Jersey and the fact that uh, we don't actually know where they all were throughout the ship's whole career. As you can see, this area of the deck uh, looks kind of like garbage. We're, we're still in the process of replacing all the teak wood deck. This is one of the areas we're going to get to, so we haven't been doing much with it since. However, when the old teak was removed, it revealed a ton of weld marks here. Some of these weld marks show uh, a former 20 millimeter gun tub. And if you're sitting at home with your model of New Jersey, you'll notice that uh, this 20 millimeter gun tub doesn't show up on it. We are uh, right next to the 1980s era refueling boom, just a little bit aft of the aftermost five inch gun before the end of the superstructure um, at, on the starboard side near the, uh, near the back of the ship. So there used to be a gun tub here for three 20 millimeter guns. Very, very early in the ship's career, this gun tub was cut away and they welded in a tub for another quad 40 anti-aircraft gun. If you come and visit the museum, uh, we're on the starboard side right now, the port side quad 40 position we're talking about has been teaked over and actually has that 40 millimeter gun in it. So we know that 20 millimeters were moved around uh, when they increased the number of quad 40s from 16 mounts to 20 mounts uh, at some point in 1943. The ship had 49 20 millimeter mounts. However, in 1945, she goes into Puget Sound and uh, the instructions say that they were going to add another uh, eight 20 millimeter guns. How were they going to do this? Uh, they were going to turn some of the single mounts into twin mounts. The single mounts just didn't have enough stopping power against the kamikaze. Uh, so twin mounts were uh, an easy stopgap measure. Or it would have been if we had enough of them. You see, we did have to retool the 20 millimeter to accept its drum and eject on the opposite side from a standard single mount when we were pairing them up. So if the drums curve out on either side and the ejection ports are on different sides. Uh, and so the US Navy never actually had enough of these guns uh, by the end of the war to do what they wanted to do. Uh, so there are a ton of questions. Go, go on any of the, the battleship forums and, and people are always asking, where did these eight guns go? And the, the simple answer is it doesn't seem like they all went on the same place. So you've got four identical Iowa class battleships. I don't think they all got eight guns in the same place. And it's likely that they didn't even all get eight guns. Some of them might have had crafty supply or weapons officers, and they may have gotten more than that. Uh, others may not have had enough in the inventory when they were in the yard and might not have gotten the full complement. Uh, still others might have gotten the eight twin mounts or some number of twin mounts and then lost more single mounts than intended. Uh, so initially the idea was the twin mounts would just replace one for one the single mounts and you're doubling your anti-aircraft capabilities with those weapons. Uh, but in practice, the twin mount was heavier than two single mounts. So oftentimes you would see two twin mounts replacing three single mounts. Uh, and so even though sources say that our 1945 anti-aircraft armament is 57 guns up from 49, I can't confirm that. We've got some really great pictures from the Puget Sound Navy Yard. You can see them at the link below, the nav source link. Um, but the, these uh, yard photos don't show all the 20 millimeter positions, and many of those guns are covered in tarps. It's always raining in Puget Sound. And so it's hard to tell from the angles whether they're single mounts or twin mounts. The confusion doesn't end there. The ship goes into mothballs in 48, and all the 20 millimeter mounts are removed and put into storage as part of the mothballing process. She's reactivated in 1950, and uh, sources say that she got 16 twin 20 millimeter mounts. And we don't know where those positions were. Uh, 
it, again, it doesn't seem like the four Iowas got their 16 mounts in the same places. And it seems like these positions only existed for about a year and would have been removed late in 50 or early in 51. Uh, Stillwell seems to indicate from oral histories that he's done, and we'll talk about that more in a minute, that these guns were removed at the end of 1950. But we have a series of pictures from early 51 that seem to show some twin mounts still on board, and they seem to be this ship and not one of our identical sister ships. And we'll talk more about that in a second. Uh, so our, our sources don't line up. And the, the long story short of this, the, the reason this is in our museum series and not a video on 20 millimeter guns, is uh, we've got a bunch of different sources that we as shipboard archeologists can draw from, but we never trust any single source. Go through why that is here in a minute. So uh, my, my first source is the ship herself. I've got an Iowa class battleship and this is my dig site. This is where I punch my Nazis and dig up uh, my lost treasure. So we remove the teak wood deck, we find 20 millimeter mounting sites. Like most archeological sites, um, this settlement was used progressively over periods of time. And so we've got evidence buried under other evidence. So this three gun tub here has, is from 43. It has a 44 era quad 40 on it. And then it's got an 80s era winch over part of the site. And then there are some other weld marks here uh, that, that we haven't figured out what they're from yet. There, there's a uh, circle over here welded on the deck. Uh, you can see there's a riveted combing around there that was part of this winch. And there's a circle over that. And you, I'm, I haven't done the research to find out what that might be from. It's certainly not from this 20 millimeter position. We don't see that in other positions. Uh, so, you know, just like a traditional landside archaeologist site or even a submerged uh, maritime archaeology site, we've got different layers built on top of each other. Uh, and, and so we can't fully trust the ship as a source. We know there was a position here. Was it single? Was it twin? Both use the same mounting point. So th this weld mark on the deck that shows a mounting point could have been either. Uh, in, in this instance, we're pretty positive it was a single mount because it is removed pretty early and replaced with a, a quad mount and, and the twin 20 millimeters weren't there. But uh, as we rip up the deck and find other positions like this all over the ship, it's not gonna tell us whether they were single or twin. So the ship isn't a reliable source. Uh, so where do we go next? Photographs are a great source. Uh, photographs are problematic for a couple of reasons. One, there were four identical Iowa-class battleships. And some close-ups, you can't even tell if it's an Iowa-class battleship. It could be easy, easily be some other class of battleship or even some other ship entirely. Uh, so how do we confirm that that picture is actually this ship? Uh, you know, sometimes we, we can be reasonably confident because it is part of a series that was donated that are all of this ship or that we get a picture that that's a pretty good tell it's new jersey we've, we've done other videos before where we've talked about hey if i see this or i see that i know it is it has to be new jersey and it's not another ship that can help oftentimes the pictures where we can see really well that this is a 20 millimeter gun are so close up that we can't see any of those tells uh, and that's the other issue the ones where we can tell it's new jersey are usually from so far away that you can't tell if it's a twin or a single mount. It's covered in a tarp, or it's at a weird angle, or, you know, maybe one of the barrels is removed from maintenance, so you, you might not even be able to tell. Uh, so, so pictures are far from reliable. Also, uh, for some other types of questions, I know this video is specifically about 20 millimeter guns, but another question that has haunted me my whole life is, uh, what color was Arizona when she sank? We don't know. Arizona, uh, was painted in the measure one camouflage scheme, which is a dark color all the way up to the top of the smokestack and light gray from the top of the smokestack up. However, 
uh, we've got two sets of instructions to the Pacific Fleet. The early set says that you paint the ship in dark blue. However, it seems like that dark blue scheme uh, faded in the sun to a light blue that was much more visible than they wanted. So there's another set of instructions that says repaint the ship in dark gray. Uh, all the pictures tend to be black and white. So is it dark blue or is it dark gray? We don't know. Uh, but the instructions say before the attack on Pearl Harbor to repaint the ship. So surely that happened, right? Not necessarily. Just because we have documentation of it doesn't mean that it was actually carried out. The paint had to be manufactured and then shipped from wherever it was made to the forward fleet base at Pearl Harbor. Then it had to be distributed to all the ships in the Pacific fleet. So they're all competing over this paint. They had to use up the quantity of old paint they had or turn it back in for the new stuff. Uh, and that's assuming that the new stuff had gotten out there in quantity and Arizona was a priority for getting it. We don't know for sure. So this brings up the other point that we've already sort of alluded on. Also, there are color pictures of Arizona uh, and there are color pictures of the wreck site not too, too long after she sunk. However, these pictures over time, the film fades. Uh, so a lot of old pictures get a bluish hint to them. So in the past, people have pointed out, ah, look, this picture is blue. Well, yeah, but the, the white stripes on the American flag over the Arizona Memorial are also blue. That is the picture fading. It is not clear proof whether the ship is gray or blue. But yeah, going back to those instructions that were put out. This brings us to another point. Uh, a plan is just a plan. Just because I see documentation for something, say a blueprint, that doesn't mean it was actually carried out. Uh, and this brings up a couple of issues. I don't have complete blueprints for the ship. and I don't have complete blueprints for every period of the ship. So I don't have any blueprints that show where these 20 millimeter guns should have gone. Um, even if I did, I would not trust them. We do have thousands of blueprints in our collection, but it's a complete mix match of what we have. We have very little that shows the ship's World War II gunnery positions, for example, but we do have an excellent blueprint of a uh, Navy pattern coat hanger. All right, well, we've got some very good stuff and uh, we've got some stuff that's useless and we've got thousands of them to go through and, and figure out what's what. Now. A plan is just a plan. Um, in our video on the booklet of general plans, we talked about the most recent one for New Jersey is from 82 or 83, and they used as the base for it an earlier blueprint of Iowa, and they just modified this to be New Jersey in 82. Well, New Jersey serves all the way up until 91, so there are a number of changes made. And some things on this plan are completely not accurate to New Jersey at all, such as some of the stuff around the conning tower, because Iowa had a completely different conning tower design, and they used that as a base instead of an earlier New Jersey plan. Uh, also, I've never seen an actual period booklet of general plans for uh, the Iowa class in World War II. It could be because the Navy just modified them all to be later. It could be that uh, the Navy destroyed them all when they became not useful anymore when they were no longer up to date. Or it could be that they're in some warehouse somewhere uncatalogued and, and the Navy and God himself doesn't know where they are. So uh, this brings us to the next point. You get what are called unauthorized ship offs. Simply is the crew does changes to their ship. They personalize it, they're at sea and they find that they need something added or something taken away. Uh, and so even though the four Iowa class battleships start out identical, you go inside one today and uh, it's completely different from the next one you go and visit. And do make sure you visit all four. It, it's not like you've seen one, you've seen them all. Don't let your significant other or your parents tell you that they're not taking you there on vacation because you've already seen a museum battleship. They are all absolutely different because they were used for different purposes. They're crewed in different things. Uh, but that means that there is variance from what the plans say you should have. Uh, and like we said earlier, just because the Navy said we're going to put eight guns on these ships doesn't mean they actually got eight. Circling back to photos before we go into the next point, believe it or not, Photoshop existed during World War II. The Navy modifies photos of its ships so that they're not showing 
classified information in these photos that are widely disseminated. Uh, individual sailors were not supposed to have cameras for personal photography in wartime, and uh, the official Navy photographs often were touched up to delete antennas around the superstructure, particularly new radar antennas. The size of the antenna could tell what frequency they were operating on, which would make it easier for Axis countries to jam those frequencies. So many pictures of World War II ships have been touched up to delete antennas uh, from any aircraft gun directors, on top of masts, all sorts of stuff like that. Even back in the 40s, they were doing this. Uh, there's also a famous picture that one of my good friends pointed out to me of the World War I British battleship Agincourt, which is decommissioned shortly after World War I. And uh, this picture has an a, uh, aircraft flying in front of it that did not exist during the lifespan of the ship. So Photoshop goes back even further than World War II. Photoshop the concept, quote unquote, not Photoshop trademark, the product that uh, exists today. So pictures are unreliable. The next source that we can look at is oral histories. There were 1,500 guys on Arizona. How has nobody ever asked one of them what color she was? There were 2,000 guys on New Jersey in uh, 1950. How was no one ever asked them where the 16 20 millimeter gun positions were? Uh, oral histories are great, and I'm glad we have them, um, but memory is fallible. For anybody to die, he died. We don't know. I don't know. I think I, if it's, the story was correct, uh, if I heard it correct, it was the black powder thing. We were, they were afraid it was going to blow up. Particularly, we're collecting these oral histories 70 years after the Korean War. Um, these guys have really great memories of what they did in their free time, what they did with their buddies, like the, the memorable things, the, the shore bombardments they did. They don't remember what color the ship was painted on December 7th, or if it had been repainted after the memo went out in October. Uh, many of them remember that the ship was in that peacetime light gray color uh, because that's what it was for most of the time they were on board. They don't remember where the 16 gun positions were, even if they were gunner's mates and served on one of them. They might be able to tell us where their position was, but they don't remember where those were or where they were remo removed. Yeah, Tommy Inkin, uh, me and him became very good friends aboard ship. He was from Staten Island, was from Jersey. I remember a lot of times we used to come up from... Norfolk by bus. Once in a while, when we were daring, we would grab a hop, a flight from Norfolk up into Connecticut, which from Connecticut, we would, we would uh, hitchhike a ride down. Paul Stilwell, who is uh, probably the greatest naval historian slash interviewer, uh, the man who literally wrote the book on Battleship New Jersey, if, if you had to buy one book on Battleship New Jersey that's out today, buy Paul Stilwell's book, Battleship New Jersey. I've, I've interviewed a number of individuals who had unusual or, or outstanding accomplishments. Dennis Wilkinson, the first skipper of the Nautilus, the first nuclear-powered submarine. David McCampbell, who was the Navy's top fighter ace in uh, World War II, Admiral Zumwalt, who really changed the social contract uh, between the sailors and the Navy as a whole. Uh, I, I feel so privileged to be able to get these stories from the horse's mouths to do exactly what you're doing, to record it while it's available so that it can be useful later. Uh, which includes dozens and dozens of oral histories that he himself conducted, the master of them. Uh, and one of those oral histories says that all of the 20 millimeter guns were removed uh, before the end of 1950. But we've got pictures from January of 51 showing those some of those guns in position. And we're able to date the photographs because it's clearly the ship going through the Panama Canal. We know when that happened. Uh, and it's part of a photo series, so we know that it is 
the ship, we can see some of the tells in these pictures. Uh, so the, the greatest oral historian of naval history has something that's a little bit off. We're talking about the difference of a couple of months, potentially. His oral history also gave him the impression that the guns were removed in segments with the bow tube being the last two on there. I can't confirm that with any other source. The pictures we have are of the stern mountings. Uh, so they are clearly still on there past 1950. So it seems like maybe they're all removed at one time. But again, it, it's not quite clear and it doesn't match up with the other sources. Uh, so the long story short of this god awful long video is uh, I don't trust blueprints unless I see it somewhere else. I don't trust pictures unless I see it somewhere else. I don't trust oral histories unless I see it somewhere else. And I definitely don't trust what I see with my own eyes on this ship unless I can confirm it with one of these other sources. Still don't know everything about this ship. All of these sources I have at my disposal that are well beyond what the lay researcher has, and I still don't know everything at this ship. I learn something new every day, and uh, almost every video we make in, in doing the uh, information for the video, uh, that we something comes up that I don't know, and I either say right in the video, I don't know, or we cut out that whole part of the video. Some things I know for sure, because I have seen it in one source or another, uh, I say in a video and is later proven wrong. History is an evolving thing, uh, much like archeology. span You dig something up, you immediately say it must be for a fertility ritual, and then later you get the evidence to figure out what it's actually for. Uh, on the battleship, we, we uncover some weld marks. And we've got an idea of what they are and what they're from, but I, I don't trust that until I've gone to the blueprints, the pictures, the oral histories, and are able to confirm it with one or two other sources. Some historians and some museums for that matter, uh, don't say something publicly un until they know a thousand percent that it is true. Uh, they might not even talk about the 20 millimeter guns until they have found out where every position was and what date they were swapped out and all that information. In a lot of ways, that's smart. You're not giving out misinformation and I have certainly said things on this channel that are probably, that, that have since been proven wrong, that uh, somebody watched that video and believes that is true and never watched the video where I said it was wrong. Um, so I have perpetuated misinformation. However, I like saying that I don't know something because there are a lot of people out there who are experts on subjects I'm not, uh, who have access to resources I don't, who then reach out and say, oh, I didn't know you didn't know what color Arizona was. Here is where some other researcher recently was able to prove it. The, the National Park Service cut paint chips off of the ship and tested or what, whatever. That's one of the things I love about this YouTube channel and this community. Uh, by putting all of this information out there, and in some instances misinformation, in some uh, instances non-information, th this whole video has been about, has been just me saying, I don't know where these guns were. Uh, you guys reach out to me every single day. Every single day I get a LinkedIn comment or a Facebook message or an email or a YouTube comment saying, oh, hey, I've got pictures of when I was on the ship. This might show what you need. Or I read this article. Or you guys are helping the museum tell a more accurate history. And by a museum saying we don't know what it is, it becomes a community project to solve these questions. That being said, just like any of these other sources, uh, I'm not gonna believe something just because one person said it. Uh, I've seen a ton of comments on the channel that are completely wrong. There's tons of uh, misinformation out there like New Jersey was at the surrender ceremony. We know that's not true. It shows up even on our own oral histories and it's, it, we know where she was on September 2nd. Uh, other things like Wisconsin is longer than New Jersey. I've never seen any actual evidence for that. You can keep saying it in the comment section all you want, but until I actually see documentation, like I have seen documentation that says New Jersey is the longest of the Iowas, I I'm not gonna believe it. What are your favorite myths and mysteries about the Iowa class battleships? 
Let us know in the comment section down below. Let's start a discussion about that and see if we can't solve some of these. Battleship New Jersey receives operating support from the New Jersey Department of State, also from a number of businesses and private individuals like yourselves. We really appreciate the support you've given us. It allows us to make content like this every day. There's a link in the description if you'd like to continue supporting us. You can also support us by liking, sharing, and subscribing so more people find out about these videos. That way, we reach more people and they are able to share their information with us and we become a better museum and a better community. Thanks for watching.